Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Are you having a good time? If you are, I just want to say thank you. If you are not having a good time, let's chat about it. What are you struggling with? What are you dealing with right now? Because I want to come alongside you and help you. And maybe this lesson will even give you a little bit of inspiration. I'm really excited about this lesson. It's all about marketing. And marketing, oh my gosh, I think people sometimes are put off by marketing because they think that it's deception and that it's lying and that it's getting people to, to do things that they don't want to do. And that's not what marketing is about. I have a totally different view on marketing and I've read some incredible authors and I want to share with you some of the things that I've learned over the years. I've done some freelance marketing work and I just love thinking about how to get people uh, informed about their issues so that then they can find the solutions that are available for their problems. That's all marketing is. It's, it's positioning what you do to somebody who needs what you provide so that then you are the solution to meet their need. But too often marketers have been painted in a bad light and marketing and advertising has been painted as deception and trying to sell people snake oil instead of the real thing. But what we're doing here is we are selling people the real thing. If you have an authentic product and you just you have a wonderful uh, business, you need to get the word out about that business. And one of the reasons that people don't have enough sales or the, one of the reasons that their business isn't working is because they're not getting the word out appropriately. They're not doing the right marketing. And the way that I like to think about marketing is as a personal brand. It is how you present yourself to the world. It's how you communicate to the world. Everybody has a personal brand. You have one right now, whether or not you know it. And that's what's marketing you. And if you want to make yourself marketable, you have to get control of your brand. And it doesn't mean that you have to change who you are. It doesn't even mean that you need to have a fancy tagline or anything like that. But you want to control the narrative. And Jeff Bezos is famous for saying that your brand is what people are saying about you when you're not in the room. Think about that. Your brand is what people are saying about you when you're not in the room. So branding then is figuring out how to have people saying the right things about you when you're not around. It's how to control the narrative. It's how to get them to be using the words that you want them to be used. I follow this one guy. He's a psychologist and he writes a lot about marketing and psychology. And he says that he was experiencing the same phrase that kept coming over and over again when he was hearing about this one person. And the phrase was, he's real smart. He processes information so fast. And Derek kind of thought to himself, wow, this guy is like a computer. But then they talked to another person that wasn't friends and didn't even know the uh, the individual that they were talking about. And that person said, that guy processes information so fast. And Derek recalls, he says, I never heard that expression in my life. And now two different people were saying the same exact thing. So he went around and he asked a bunch of different people, hey, what do you think of so-and-so? And they would say... He processes information so fast. And everybody was using the same phrase. And what Derek kind of realized is that this must have been planned, that that guy actually planted that phrase. He processes information so fast in everybody's heads so that when he would uh, be talked about, when people would talk about what he does and how he works, they would use the phrase that he designed, which is, I process information very fast quickly. I process information so fast. So you want to control that as well. You can come up with the words that people are going to use and it's not manipulated and it's not deceptive. It's controlling what you do and letting people know what you do so that then they have the right words and the right ability to share that with other people as it comes up. And remember, the main purpose of this program is for me to give you the tools to create a wedding DJ, for me to give you the tools so that you can create a wedding DJ practice that leaves people fascinated so that when they go away from the event, they've experienced a wonderful a DJ and they were focused on the wedding and the DJ was just there to be able to make everything happen and that they remember you as somebody who was great. And in order for me to do that, I have to tell you a lot about branding and we have to talk a lot about how we can brand yourself so that it is effective and so that it's going to work for people. Because people don't just do business with companies. They do business with other people. It always comes down to people at the end of the day. So it's okay to be personal and it's okay to use your name. You don't need to have some kind of fancy business 
business name, although it, it might work, but people love to know who is the person who's making all this happen. So I just use my name as, as my personal brand. I, I It's called Jay Mitchell. And when people meet me, they, they know that I am Josh, that I'm the one who's behind it. And it's no, it's not trying to be fancy and it's not trying to build up this empire or anything, but that it's I'm there to provide a very specific job to somebody who needs the work that I do. So I recommend that you use your name as well if you're just starting off or if you're looking to kind of reinvent yourself or if you're looking for that next phase of what the brand looks like. Use your name and just you can say something like John Smith Wedding DJ Services or you could say Ryan Manchester's Wedding DJ Solutions. There's different ways that you can do it, but you can use your main name and have that be the focal point of the brand because then people are recommending you. They're not just recommending a business name, but they're recommending a person. And that can go a really long way if if your goal for this is to have a personal practice. Now, if your goal is to build a multi-operation DJ where, where you have lots of DJs involved, you might need to decide on a different name that works. But I think that it's really good to start off as making a name for yourself and using the name in your business can be a way to do that. So just something to think about as you are starting the the branding phase, but you want to craft a, saw, a strong personal brand, one that allows you to have success on repeat because the goal of branding is allow you to have business after one event. And so that people know what to call you, they know how to frame your services, they know what, where to look, you have a website, you have all these assets that come out of the brand, but you can start creating a brand without graphics. You can start creating a brand by the words you use when you talk to people about what you do. So saying something as easy as I provide wedding DJ solutions is a way to brand yourself because now people know the language to use to describe what you do. Or you might say I provide wedding entertainment. Now that's a little bit more vague because wedding entertainment could be a band, it could be a dancing group, it could be, I don't even know, it could be pigeons flying out of a cage. Wedding entertainment might look different than wedding DJ services or wedding disc jockey services. So there's different ways to phrase it and there's different ways to do it. I would recommend that you position yourself as clear as possible for what you provide. But again, you don't just want to position yourself as somebody who is a an expert and who's done this a ton of times, but that you are there as a guide. You're there to help people go where they want to go because you have the expertise in knowing how to craft music for an event and you can take them and, 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 bring, and bring them into that. And you can have your wonderful music abilities and the knowledge that you have about um, DJing and you can take that into the wedding and to create a wonderful environment. So that is what branding is about. And I really want you to think differently about branding. Branding isn't just logos and colors and designs, although a lot of times the visual representation of a brand is a logo and it's figuring out how you want to identify yourself visually. But I want you to think differently. It's really about the story that people are telling themselves about you. And that's kind of what Jeff Bezos was getting at. It's what people are talking about when you're not in the room. So what is the story that people are saying? You have to realize that you can control that story. You are writing that story and you're allowing other people to look at it every time you do anything, whether you talk to them on the phone or you send them an email or they see you in person. You are crafting that story of what people are going to say when they remember you and what you do. So let's look up this website together right now. Let's go to Edward Tufty's website, tufty.com, and let's look at this website together. So this website looks like it came out of 1997 or something, right? Like this website is so old. And uh, as we scroll around and as we just look on it, look how much words are on this page. You don't even know what this guy does. You don't even know what this guy is. It just says the work of Edward Tufty and Graphics Press. And you're just kind of figuring out why am I even on this website? This is an example of a brand that is very confusing. You're not really sure what it is. It's It kind of communicates this old sense of uh, yesteryear. Um, and what it is at the end of the day is this guy is an author. But it takes a really long time to figure that out. You kind of have to go over to his about page and you have to realize that he has a bunch of these books and that he does some sculptures and that he has a ton of links all over the place. But he's using Times New Roman font and it just communicates this sense that he's kind of old school. But the truth is, this guy is super famous. Everybody at the New York Times knows him. And he kind of invented um, a, a way of thinking about graphics and a way of taking the information that we use. I've even used a lot of his principles in this in designing this course. 
Um, but he has a website that I think is so terrible. It's so confusing, and there's so many things on this website. He would say it's the best website ever because he argues that there needs to be a lot of things on a website in order for it to be good. And I agree. I just think that this is a very confusing website. There's too many things are going on here, and it's not very clear what he does or why he provides it. But now let's look at this other website. Let's go over to Michael Hyatt's website. And Michael Hyatt, right on the front page of his site, says that I am a leadership mentor. But not just that he's a leadership mentor, that he's my le- your leadership leadership mentor. So if you're looking for a guy to help you to win at work and succeed at life and lead with confidence, he's your guy. This is where you can go to figure out more about that. So you can write on your website a simple tagline just like that. You can use something like your wedding DJ, or you can use something like your guide to wedding DJ bliss or wedding DJ success. Use something simple. Use a one-liner. And you might think that that's cliche because that's what everybody has on their websites. But look, usually cliche things are cliche for a reason because they work, because other people recognize them and they resonate with them. So err on the side of clarity. Err on the side of making your brand easy to find and easy to read and easy to understand. Because if you are confusing and people don't know who you are or what you do or why they should buy from you, they're going to move on to the next guy who's easier to understand. Because people really don't buy the best products or really buy the best things that are out there. They buy the things that they can understand. And that's a working theory from Donald Miller of we buy the things that we understand immediately. If we see somebody meets our need, even if it's more expensive but a lesser product, we will often wind up buying the thing that is really easy for us to do because our brain is trying to survive. It's just trying to get through it. And think about the couple who's hiring you for their wedding. They just want to get the DJ figured out so that they can start planning the wedding and get closer to their marriage all being worked out. So make it easy for them to hire you by being very clear in your communication. But think about what people might say to themselves when they come across your website. What are they going to say when they look at your colors and the way that things are laid out? Are they going to say, wow, this guy's a great DJ? Or are they going to say, wow, this guy looks like he might be tough to work with? If your website's all cluttered and it's really hard to get around, really hard to find information on, they're going to find the website or find another DJ who has one that's easier to understand. And that's the one that they're going to reach out to and ultimately go with because they feel like they know that person. They feel like there's this connection there. So we need to work really hard on your website. And in a separate bonus tutorial, I will go and show you how to create an amazing wedding DJ website using Squarespace. It's really easy. You don't need to know how to code. You don't even know how you don't need to know a ton about websites at all. I'm going to show you how to do it all in that Squarespace lesson, but we don't have time for that right now. We're talking about how to make your website really easy to understand and realizing that marketing isn't about the stuff that you make, but the story that people tell. And that's a quote from Seth Godin in his book, All Marketers Are Storytellers. So it's not about being a great DJ and telling people how great you are as a DJ. It's about the story that you are telling and really the story of the person who's going to hire you and their story and feeding into that to say that, look, you can take them to the place that they want to go, that you are their guide to help make the day stress-free and wonderful. And because of that, they're going to hire you because they feel this connection with you. So it's all about storytelling. And that doesn't mean to tell your life story. That doesn't mean to say, you know, your grandfather loved music and that's what inspired you. People really don't care about that story, although you can tuck it away somewhere on your website if you feel like it. They care about what do you have to do with their life and Are you the person that's going to be able to deliver for them? Are you the person that's going to be able to join their team? So just another word on design. Think about how you can design something that plays into that story, that plays into something that's going to be attractive to a a bride or a groom or their family members that are looking. You might design something that looks cool to you personally, but you want to design something that, that feels familiar to a couple that's getting married, something that's going to make them say, oh, yeah, this is kind of like the other wedding websites that I'm looking on. So you want it to be elegant. You want it to be celebratory. You want it to be attractive, but not just attractive to you, attractive to their story and their life. So I want to take some time to walk you through my branding evolution, and it is not perfect by any means, but this is how I got into DJing and what it looked like when I first started off. So I first started off just by calling myself DJ Josh. And not a great DJ name, but it's what I had. And it worked for those early years. And people hired me as DJ Josh because I was able to meet a need for them and they needed a DJ. And I just made this in pages on my Mac, uh, pages in iWork. It just DJ Josh, uh, DJ service. And it was very simple. It was very clear. And people hired me because they needed a DJ and I could serve that need for them. 
But then I started exploring with some taglines, and I said, make your event come to life. That was one tagline. Another one was a variety of music for various events. I actually still think I have that Gmail account, variety of music for various events at gmail.com. Don't email me there because I don't check it. But a variety of music for various events, it kind of sounded nice and rhymy to me. I thought people would remember that, but ultimately I didn't stick with that because it, it wasn't effective. Like nobody was liking that tagline. It wasn't adding anything, so I got rid of it. And then I changed the name to just J Mitchell productions and that's still what i am today jmitchellproductions.com jmitchellproductions at gmail.com and uh i in the early days i was doing more production oriented stuff i wanted to do more live sound and studio recording and i was teaching people lessons out of my parents basement but i had solutions for people when it came to uh their their music whether it was for their wedding or whether it was for an event and then I, I decided to go ahead and brand it using the script face. And this became my brand for several years. And this is kind of how I left it for like the first three or four years of my uh, DJing, both for weddings and for the other things that I was a part of. So I had a website all hooked up, had a QR code on there. And my website said at the top, um, we are a company providing exceptional studio recordings, quality entertainment, quality DJ entertainment, unique lessons, and sound solutions. So... I wouldn't say that now. I would probably say I am a wedding DJ. That's probably how I would have rewritten it and I would have probably worked on that. But coming across as a bigger team than I actually am is something that I'm um, I, I'm kind of against that now. Like I, I don't think that I would call myself we because it was really only just me ever. There was never really a team of people. So we are a company providing exceptional studio recordings. But you can see here, I was trying to be really, really clear on what I did and how they could be a part of it. And trust me, I got clients. Like People looked at this and said, oh, you're a company that provides those things. I need those things. And they contacted me, and, and I got paid to do studio recording. I got paid to do DJing events. I got paid to do live sound. I got paid to, to do guitar lessons and piano lessons. So you can do the same thing by making your website really clear and easy to understand for the visitors that come across. You can say, I am a event DJ for weddings and events. You can phrase it in such a way that positions yourself to not just be exclusive to weddings, um, but you want to phrase it so that it's really easy. So having that tagline, and you can see that I had my DJ Josh page, which was just my DJ services. I had the lessons page where I taught people how to play guitar. And then I had my live sound page, which I eventually took down because I didn't want to do a live sound anymore the DJing was paying more and it was more fun and then I had a contact page where uh, people could fill out a form to tell me their date and tell me what they were interested in and then I could figure out if I was available and I could get back in touch with them um, but something changed when I started uh, looking around wedding wire and wedding wire I noticed a lot of people used flowers and they used really elegant imagery and I said why not add flowers to my uh, logo so I probably wouldn't do this today but you can notice here that I was getting closer into the world I was getting closer into the world of the bride I wanted to make myself look attractive to somebody who was hiring me from that perspective so I added the flowers just to try to make it look pretty and ultimately I don't know if that was the best decision but that's what I did and it, and it worked it I got contacted through wedding wire and I got paid and I didn't even do any paid advertising. It was just that little tweak that communicated that I was paying attention to those kinds of details. Now, here's an ad that I put together at one point for a $4.99 wedding DJ package. And I probably wouldn't do this again, like I said, because I don't charge that less anymore. But um, I, again, I was trying to get closer to what, what would it look like? Like this ad never went anywhere. This was me just kind of playing around on my computer to try to fi figure out how I could make myself look appealing to a bride, look appealing to somebody who would want to hire me. And again, we want to think about how that's going to look for you. How can we make your brand look appealing to somebody who's going to be in that market to hire you? Um, and if you want to be known as a cheap DJ, you're going to get people who are budget people who tend to be a little bit more picky. They tend to be a little bit more detail oriented. Um, but anyway, I eventually just changed my brand to J Mitch Productions. I chopped off the full last name. So it's just J Mitch Productions. It's easier. And I have my PO box in a circle. And that's the only branding I really have. I, I use the, the kind of pink pale color, or coral color. Um, and then I have that black sign that I used for a while. Um, but this is what my brand looks like now. Here's the letterhead and here's the, the business card. And it's really simple. It's really to the point. And that's why I say your name is probably all you need. And if I were to even do this over again and probably go through my next branding evolution, I would probably chop off productions and I would just say 
Josh Mitchell wedding DJ because it's that's all what that's what I am. I'm not a production company. I am a D, I am a wedding DJ and I can do everything you need for your wedding. That's what I am and I, and I want to be really clear about that with people because when you're clear about your business to yourself, you're clear about your business to your customers. So, I'm even in the process right now of tweaking my brand a little bit, but J Mitch Productions and my letterhead there and my email address, see how it all kind of matches. It's all kind of coming together and you can see that when somebody came across this, they felt like they were dealing with a professional. And I was trying to, to communicate that. You need to communicate professionalism by having a business card, by having a letterhead, by having a consistent look and feel to your branding. And on top of that, you have to have some photos. So let's take some time to talk about high quality photos. You want really good photos of you using your equipment in action at an event. So this is why I say get a classy formal event. I did a prom at a really high end restaurant type place where they actually have weddings. And I got a lot of pictures of my equipment and myself using the equipment there. And even though it wasn't a wedding, it helped me get hired for weddings because it looked classy and elegant like a wedding would. So try to get hired at, you know, whatever you can get hired for in terms of price at a really classy place so that then you can get the pictures there. The pictures are worth thousands of dollars because they're going to allow you to get hired. You can put those on your website and it's going to convey a sense of professionalism. It's going to convey a sense that you actually do this, that you're not just making it up. So look into that, look into getting photos, but also look into trying to find events that are really classy because I bet you that you will get hired quicker if you have authentic photos of you and your equipment in action at a real event showing that you've done it than if you don't have any photos. If all your photos are of close-up speakers, nobody cares about speakers. What they care about is people enjoying themselves. It's about the joy. So you want to communicate the joy in your brand. You don't want to communicate speakers and knobs and stuff. You want to communicate the fact that you know how to uh, get a celebration happening. How You know how to kick off a party and keep a party going. So that is all about photos and branding. And I didn't have a photographer. I had my wife. Um, she wasn't my wife at the time, Hope. So you can see in this picture, she brought her Nikon DSLR camera along and took photos of my equipment and I had these on my website. I still think I use one of them as my profile picture somewhere and it's kind of old but leverage your family relationships and people who have cameras that are close to you to come along to an event and get some really nice pictures especially if they have that nice blurry background that always is an added bonus and I know you can do that on an iPhone 7 or uh, maybe there's a way to do that on Android but that depth of field where the background is a little bit blurry on your headshot it's really nice. So think about getting some headshots of your face so that people know what you look like as a person, but also get some pictures of your equipment in action at a nice, classy, high-end event. So some essentials for your brand toolbox are a professional logo, which I can teach you how to make in a bonus lesson where we will go over how to use an icon and how to find icons that are available that are nice and able to use for your brand. So that's in it. Look for the bonus lesson for that. But you want a logo. You want a clear and clean easy to navigate and understand website. And again, look for the bonus video on how to set up a website in Squarespace. You want a professional domain. You don't want it to be .wix.com or .squarespace.com. You want it to be a professional domain and there's a yearly cost to that. Again, you have a business. This is one of the expenses every year that I pay and every professional pays for a brand uh, a domain every year. You want professional email using G Suite. Now, it's cheaper than ever, and I'm at the point where my email is now printed on a bunch of cards, my Gmail account, but I wouldn't do that again. You can get a professional email for $5 a month, or you can prepay and do it for $50 a year through Google. And it's right in Gmail, and which is wonderful. It's very quick and very easy to use through Google. But your actual email address, the at blank.com part, can be the domain that you buy. So if you buy that do domain through GoDaddy or through Google Domains, it's usually about $15 a year for the domain. And every year you have to pay that as a part of your business expense. Um, but then you're able to set up professional email. So people are emailing Josh at joshmitchellproductions.com or whatever your domain name is going to be. So think about what your domain could be and search GoDaddy to see if it's available or hover.com is another one. But I like using the Google G Suite email because it's so cheap. For 50 bucks a year, it is really robust email that's really reliable. I've never had any problems with my, my Gmail accounts because it's Google. They have 
some of the best servers in the world. So leverage the power of video to create connection. So in the early days, I had a video. I'm not even sure where it is, but I used to send out this little video to people of me and Hope at different events. And it was just telling people, hi, I'm a DJ. I'd love to work with you at your event. I'm always very organized and I can help you make sure that your event comes to reality. If you want to, if you want to hire me, here's my number. And people appreciated that. And today, video is more important than ever. So leverage the power of video to create connections. And finally, I want to use DJ Lou Paris as a case study. On the homepage of his website, he has a very easy to understand animation video. And you can probably search around. You can uh, buy an animation video for a pretty low cost. These kind of whiteboard videos. Look, look up like how to down, how to make a whiteboard video, and it's of the hand kind of drawing different things, and you can drop in different drawings and different ideas and turn that into a video that then you can put on your website. So it's way easier and not as expensive as you think to have some nice quality videos. And I love how DJ Lou did that on his website. And when brides watch that, they know what to do next. Clarity is so important. You want to spell it out for people like they are in first grade. You want to say, if you would like to hire me, please call me or please send me an email and we will talk. And it sounds really obvious, but when you invite people in and you direct them to do that, it is amazing how effective it is because people will uh, will see that they need the DJ and they see that you're able to meet that need and then they respond by uh, following that call to action. So having a call to action on your website, having a call now button or email now or check availability now is a big thing. And check availability is a big one because you might not be available for their event. And it's always fun when you have a ton of people that want to hire you and you're not able to meet all of their needs because you're already DJing an event. So if you get to that point, then you know that it's time to maybe hire somebody else or maybe start referring somebody else to um uh, maybe having a friend that you can refer to and you can teach them all the principles that you learn from this course. All right, sales. In the sales process, you're probably wondering, how the heck do I get hired? Like, where does this all come in? And here's the process that we talked about a little bit in the couple's journey. But there's always going to be an initial request. People are going to reach out and say, are you available for my date? As I was recording this a few minutes ago, I got an email that said, are you available on June 8th in this location? And I responded pretty much immediately and I said, yes, I am. Because that's what happens. You need to have a template ready to go when somebody reaches out and it's a sales letter. And the sales letter explains all of the needs that they have and explains that you can meet them. And you can say, hey, are you looking for this? Hey, are you looking for this? Hey, have you thought about this? And then you can say, well, I offer those things and here's how much it costs. And at the end of that email, you give them a clear call to action. Please fill out this form and we will get your contract started. It sounds so easy, right? But it's a matter of putting it together. And when somebody does reach out to you, that you have that sales letter ready to go. So in another video, uh, we can talk about sales letters and we can go into more depth about that. But you want to have a really nice email template ready to go that outlines the problems that the couples have. And as they read those, they're going to be thinking to themselves, I need this, I need this, I need this. And here's somebody then who can fill those goals. So that is what um, having a sales letter is all about. And people will reach out to you, then you will respond with that sales letter. And sometimes they'll have questions, they want to talk to you on the phone. And in the early days, I used to go and meet with people in person. And I would talk to them about how I could meet their needs, and I would listen to their concerns. And then I asked for the sale. I said, do you guys want to hire me? And I was silent. And they said yes. I never met with somebody in person who wanted to meet with me to learn more about my services and then did not hire me. And the reason is because when they meet with you in person and you go over all these details, you form a connection with them. So if you're finding that you're not getting hired by online contacts, you might just need to go start meeting with people in person. So if you are communicating via email, just make sure your information is all accurate, clear, punctual, that you're there's no typos in there. You want to be as professional as you possibly can. And on the phone, try not to talk too much because people are going to ask questions and just answer them as quickly as you can and then just ask them if they have questions. Let them do the processing in their head. Again, DJs make a mistake when they overcompensate by talking too much during the sales process. I know I lost a few clients because I, I kept blabbing on a little bit, either in an email or on a call. So 
either meet with them in person or keep it nice and short and just let them know that you can meet their needs and then move on. That's when you do a contract and they sign the contract, which is the agreement of how much you're going to get paid for what you're going to do at what place and what time. Then uh, they will pay uh, a deposit, which is a an amount of money that go, goes towards the total. So it's not like they get this money back, like a security deposit. No, this is a deposit that goes towards the overall amount. So they will pay their first payment. So if you don't like the word deposit, you can use the terminology first payment. Hey, I, I would like you to make your first payment down on on the total. And it just might be 50%. Some people will do percentages. So catering companies I've seen have done, I need you to pay 50% up front and 50% a month in advance. So you can create how you want that relationship to go. But I use the invoice to remind people how to pay. So the invoice is that next step about how to get them to pay their amount. And then after that, it's just a matter of planning with them and making it all happen. So that's the sales process of waiting for that initial request. But that initial request is not going to come unless you have a clear brand, unless you've positioned yourself as somebody to be hired, unless you have made yourself findable. So that is what having a brand is all about. And again, it's not about you. It's about the couple hiring you. It's about their needs and what they are doing. So if any of this has been intriguing to you, there is going to be a additional lesson that goes into more detail about persuasive techniques and specifically what to write in the sales letter and all of that kind of stuff. Um, But what you have learned so far just in this lesson is that marketing does not have to be deception. And that if you want to build a business that reaches people, that sells, and that is is going to be successful, you need to be clear and you need to be controlling the narrative. You have to give people the words that you would like them to use when they hire you and you want to be insanely simple. I mean, I don't think I can make it any clearer than that. You have to almost pretend like you're a caveman, as Don Miller would say. So there's our marketing and sales lesson. And if you would like more coaching and advice on this, do not hesitate to reach out and I can help you with your exact problem that you're encountering. Thanks so much, and I will see you in the last lesson. We're almost there. How to stay resilient.